Good morning, folks. We'll check in on the sun, weather, and check out a barrage of science on where the Earth meets the sun in terms of climate, the top of the sky. We've got a special video coming tonight, but we're starting at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours on our star presenting a largely blank northern hemisphere and a calm soiree of sunspots on the south, trailing behind the lone dark coronal hole near the equator. We don't have much in the way of solar flaring from the sunspots, and the solar wind is quiet here at Earth. But for fun, let's check out this plasma filament. He gets cocky and then gets yanked back down. There she goes. Folks, we've had some winter records broken by this latest storm to hit the eastern half of the U.S. It is cold down into Florida. And as this system prepares to move on, we'll next go across the world to where a similar system is heading into Pakistan today. More severe than the system that hit the U.S. But speaking of which, another is coming across the states this coming week. Eyes open. We're going to one of the most important irradiance forcing inputs of the sun, the highest irradiance, the X-ray flares. They do indeed have electrical coupling with the ionosphere that immediately begins to affect the electrodynamics of the atmosphere, and therefore the clouds and climate. We're going to end there today, so remember it, and its effect on the ionosphere is improperly measured on a curve, a scale, but it is actually a threshold event type scenario, like getting the chicken to cook temperature. Up until that point, it's pink and potentially bacterial, but at that critical threshold, the chicken will never be pink again, and those bacteria are gone forever. Sticking with those upper layers, CO2 has climate effects up there, but it actually appears that they are dependent on geomagnetic activity. That's about the most ironic and quasi-hilarious for observers science article of the year. Up next, the crux of this one is that they are noticing some ozone and stratospheric phenomena, and it's not that the phenomena are entirely outside what they thought could be possible, it's that the other observables of the mechanism supposed to be driving those phenomena are not going to work, namely, the tropospheric upward transport. The models climatologists have used for years are adequately characterizing how lift and convection allows the lower atmosphere to force layers above but the lack of understanding of the up and down of the upper level flows and interaction with the ionosphere has caused the electrodynamic forcing to be overlooked and its blame placed on the atmosphere chemistry. Up next is where you can tell the AGU is commissioning these papers. In a study of the auroral electrojet, as modified by solar activity and the variation of the solar wind, they figured out that when energetic particles are injected into the auroral current, whether by CME impact, geomagnetic storm, or flare-driven proton storm, the vertical wind motion becomes as or more important than the horizontal wind component. This is a key identification of the implied answer from that last paper, and it implies further that the global electric circuit up and down flow is much more climatologically and meteorologically important. Now last but not least, what's the thing veteran observers would use to put the nail in the coffin of doubt on the solar wind current sheet electrodynamic forcing of clouds? That'd be Dr. Brian Tinsley. He delivered one of the best talks at our 2019 conference, and indeed we are looking at the up and down electrodynamics. We're looking at the modulation within the solar wind, and we're specifically looking at the interplanetary magnetic field, which means we're dealing once again with the solar wind electric current sheet. Once again, discussing the clouding up of Earth. Ding ding. Twins. Folks, this is going to become hugely important tonight in part two of the next disaster. In part one, we went over the Earth evidence of the cold events, the ice release Heinrich events, magnetic excursions and their half cycles, volcanic eruptions and extinctions, and they match up on a 12,000 year main cycle. Tonight, we're going to come right back to that final point, but do so from the opposite direction. Why the galactic astrophysics demands such an event on a cycle. Part two, coming tonight subscribe so you don't miss it we greatly appreciate your support we'll do this all again tomorrow right here but right now it's 4 20 a.m in the new valley of the sun eyes open no fear be safe everyone